What's up, y'all? Today, I finally found a music-related article in the Rolling Stone. Musicians and DIY indie types should know most of the information in here. But the reason I brought this article up is actually to use it as a jumping-off point to talk about some other stuff. Luke, a music industry veteran, uh, received a dispiriting message. A one-time starter station was now working with an independent promoter. And this new relationship means that the independent promoter controls all the access to the radio station. So Luke now has to pay to get one of his artists added to the playlist. So ever since this independent promoter, uh, you have to pay 1000 to $1,500 to get any work on that station. And they say, oh, we can do it for $1,000. And so as much as it sucks, we have to pay the toll. Uh, pay to play continues to be a common practice in the radio business. They form relationships with stations and it allows the labels to engage in pay for play without direct transfer of funds to the station, thus blurring or concealing the actual nature of the transaction. So a lot of sneaky stuff going on here. Over the past year, the number of indies demanding pay for play is growing. Enough time has passed since the last payola lawsuits, and nobody is scrutinizing this as tightly as they used to be. So if you want to get anything done at that station, they're going to tell you, you have to go to talk to the godfather and ask him for a favor. And they send an invoice, $800 for water bottles, uh, $1,500 in t-shirts. This is some criminal activity going on here on the part of the radio stations. They probably don't even listen to the music they promote. It's just a transaction. Okay, so you might be wondering, what is the benefit to the artist? Well, it's not much. It's hard to determine. Uh, m most paid spins come overnight when hardly anyone is awake. There are some stations, if you pay the toll, you're getting spins at 2 in the morning. But according to radio veterans, a rising spin count can be a sign of commercial vitality. That, you know, 3.30 in the morning uh, airplay slot might just be the one play that, that gets your track discovered and just blows it up. So spins that are paid for at night might eventually translate into plays during daylight hours. And that's might and eventually. Programmers like Matthew are frustrated by the pay-for-play system, but they often remain sympathetic toward the stations that make these exclusive deals. A few Davids fighting to stay alive among the large media goliaths. So these, uh, these indie promoters are actually helping the small radio stations because look at it it's it's just logical if you're a small company and you have a dozen stations all of a sudden you're adding a million dollars to your bottom line and if you make one of these deals with an independent promoter you're like heck yeah we're doing this and you just tell your program directors this is the deal i don't care what the records are you add five of them a week so i don't think that helps anybody but we all want to be one of those five records well do we um, I would suggest that that's coming more out of some sort of like vanity or some sort of like covetous. It's literally he who has the money calls the shots. So the way I see it, the entire radio industry is basically just an advertising program. So you pay them to advertise your song to their audience. And is this really a valuable way to get your music out there? If Again, if you're a DIY or independent musician. So let's check out some of the comments. Green Candy says, I have a friend that owns one of these indie marketing companies. When I asked him if he could help me get my music into the right hands, his response was, you can't afford me. It's all rigged. That's why Rock is currently on a downturn. Captain Kevin says, uh, my kids are 17 and 15. Neither of them own a radio. Their music comes from social media. So as I said in the beginning, I want to use this radio station story to jump into a bigger point that I want to make to this audience, which is, is paying for radio promotion still worth it? Because that's what it is. It's promotion. It's advertising. I see a lot of guys in this area who uh, they know somebody at some radio station. They know a guy who has an internet radio station, or they know a guy who knows a guy who uh, hosts a show on, you know, uh, WTOP or whatever the station is. And they're like bragging about this as if it's some sort of like, oh, they're on a higher level because they know the radio directors. 
And so it, it seems to me they're like, it's like bragging that you know a really good pot dealer uh, or you know a, a really good bank robber. Like you're going to magically be able to get anybody on that playlist. No, you're not. You're going to need lots of money from that person to get them on the playlist. Even if you do, the benefit that you get from that is thinning out and it continues to wane as years go by and as digital and social media and streaming become more dominant. So what did they do for their artists? Well, they introduced new releases into the radio marketplace. So that's like taking a needle and dropping it into a haystack. That's what these radio guys are going to do for you. So here's a big point right here. If the band or artist is great, we want to be involved. So they're really not interested in you until you've already kind of demonstrated your greatness, until you've already proven that you can already attract uh, an audience and build a brand and build a social media campaign. What it sounds like he's saying here is that, oh, all you have to do is have really great music and we'll put it on the radio. But what he's actually saying is you pretty much have to do all of your own advertising and promotional work and pay for it yourself first. Build your buzz, build your audience, build your fan base, and then we can take it from there and capitalize off of all of your hard work promoting. Keep in mind, this is a guy who is who used to be in the radio industry, probably 50 years ago, uh, I would assume. Uh, it's very simple, actually. You service the station with the music and you follow up. This is the biggest fake news I think I've ever read in my entire life. Yeah, just send your uh, your little thumb drive directly to the program director at the radio station. It's totally unsolicited. Just send it to him with a nice little thank you card and say, hey, thanks for uh, creating my music career out of nothing. After a few weeks of follow-up, the CD will enter the station's top 30 charts, not the thumb drive, not the MP3, the CD, all right? So what exactly does it cost to do a radio promotion campaign? $1,800 to $2,400. We normally mail out 300 CDs to radio stations, so postage and mailers will normally run about 800 bucks just for the postage. So add that into your uh, let's let's be generous. Let's call it 2,000 uh, bucks, about 800 bucks for your postage. And of course, to have 300 CDs duplicated, that's going to run you about a thousand bucks as well. So we're up to what about four or five thousand dollars. This is uh, to get a lot of airplay at 3 o'clock in the morning when nobody's listening to the radio. So again, I'm very confused by this like obsession that people have with getting their music played on the radio. It's like, oh, that's, that's their dream. That's their, their grandest vision to be heard by two or three people, maybe, after spending thousands and thousands of dollars. So here's a couple experts over at CD Baby. Uh, the experts weigh in. Is radio play important when it comes to an artist's success? Definitely. Uh, probably a radio program director right here. Uh, radio is still a primary tool for breaking music to the mainstream audience. Is it really, though? Is the mainstream audience tuning in at 3 a.m.? I don't think so. You're going to get the, the, the crazy stream audience. You're going to get the drug dealers and the people popping molly and coming home drunk from the club at that time. I don't know if you want those guys as your fans. Maybe you're an EDM producer. Maybe you do. Uh, it's less important than it used to be, though, particularly for niche artists. Isn't every artist kind of a kind of a niche artist? They, uh, niche artists can thrive solely on online success. Well, that's interesting. There's virtually zero chance of any non-label artist breaking through on terrestrial radio. Radio should not be a part of any indie or DIY artist's plan. Guys in the DMV have this fantasy that they're going to magically get discovered on radio and they're a really cool guy that's going to get them radio play and that's going to be the one thing that's going to save their career. It's not. You have to have social media working for you already. Why not take care of that first? It's like a tough reddish blackish pill to swallow, but once you understand this, it's going to free you up to focus on doing the stuff that actually matters. So that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. Have you ever gotten any radio play? Have you had any stuff played on the radio, on internet radio? Uh, what do you think of this whole phenomenon uh, as far as the indie uh, promoters or whatever they're called? What do you think about that? Do you agree? Do you disagree? 
uh, leave a comment down below. We'll keep it going. Uh, but definitely uh, leave a like if you like. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell two, three times if you want to stay on top of all the uploads. Absolutely share this video. Uh, go to the Rolling Stone article. Share it with everybody. Share it with all your musician friends so that we can start to break this conditioning a little bit of everybody who just has their dream as being played on the radio. And then they achieve that dream and they're at the same place they were before it even happened. But I think the more financially savvy way of dealing with this is to just simply start your own indie promotional company. Do a couple of backroom payola deals with these radio stations and that's how you get the money.